Hello, how are you? Here we go with chapter two, lesson number five, differentiating e to the power of x. Remember, e to the power of x is our exponential function with a base e, and it's something that we came across in higher. Recap from higher, remember a base that often occurs in maths and physics is the base e, and e is the number 2.72 and so on, but to three significant figures it's just 2.72. If you put e into the calculator, then press equals, then it will give you 2.718281828, blah, 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 blah. And as I said, e to the power of x is your exponential function with base e, and sometimes it is written exp to the power of x. In the higher maths, we were looking at the graphs of exponentials and the graph of e to the power of x, and it looks something like this. It's an upward sloping exponential that increases faster as x increases. Note here that this x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, which means if you extend it further back to the left, if you keep on going, well, the graph will get closer and closer to it, but it will never touch. It will just keep getting closer and closer and closer and closer. We also looked at the inverse of e to the power of x, and what was that, Callum? Good. The inverse of e to the power of x is your natural logarithm, log base e of x, often written as ln x. What we're going to do now in advanced higher is we're going to differentiate e to the power of x. Woo! Let's do it. Differentiating e to the power of x is probably one of the easiest parts in advanced higher maths because if y equals e to the power of x, what do you think, Adam, we would get if we differentiate e to the power of x? e to the power of x. Perfect, yes. It just stays as e to the power of x. However, what you need to remember is that is only if you have e to the power of x. Say we had e to the power of 2x. Well, what we'd have to then do is apply the chain rule. So if it was e to the power of 2x, we would differentiate the 2x and get 2, and we'd multiply by that 2. So we'd have 2 e to the power of x. So e to the power of anything will stay as it is, but then we have to remember to multiply by the derivative of the index. Let's try some examples. So example one, differentiate y equals e to the power of 6x. Brandon, what would that become? e to the power of 6x would become? Good, it stays as e to the power of 6x, but what do you need to do, Brandon? Good, you need to multiply by the derivative of what is the what the index is so you'd multiply by the derivative of 6x and if you differentiate 6x with respect to x you would get 6 so you'd end up with 6 e to the power of 6x perfect example 2 differentiate y equals 3e to the power of x squared plus 4e to the power of negative 2x abby help us out what would happen if we differentiate 3e to the power of x squared Good, it would just stay as it is. The 3 is not going to change, and e to the power of something just stays as e to the power of something. However, what do you need to do, Abby? Good, you multiply by the derivative of the index. So we're multiplying by the derivative of the x squared. Perfect. And keep going, Abby. We'd be adding on. Good, you would have 4e to the power of negative 2x. That would just stay as it is. The 4 is going to stay e to the power of something. Differentiates to become e to the power of something. It just stays. But you multiply by the derivative of, good, the index. So multiply by the derivative of this negative 2x. From that then, if you do that, well, you'd have 3e to the power of x squared. And if you differentiate x squared, you would get 2x. So it's 3e to the power of x squared times by the 2x plus 4e to the power of negative 2x times by negative 2. Good, because if you differentiate negative 2x with respect to x, you get negative 2. From there then, well, really, you've got the 3 times the 2, which will give you 6. Really, you should put the x next, and then you'd have e to the power of x squared. And then here, you've got the 4 times negative 2, which will give you negative 8. And we've, again, got an e to the power of negative 2x. And that will be your answer. Example 3, differentiate y equals e to the power of 2x times cos 2x. DJ, what are you thinking? Perfect. You would use the product rule. Why, DJ, would you use a product rule? Because you've got one function in terms of x times by another function in terms of x. You got it. Well done. So, the product rule. 
if y equals u times v, dy by dx would be u dash v plus u v dash. So u is going to be e to the power of 2x, and v is going to be cos of 2x. Perfect. Differentiate u with respect to 2x. So we'd have e to the power of 2x. If you differentiate that, you would end up with 2 e to the power of 2x. Remember, e to the power of something stays as e to the power of something, but multiplied by the derivative of the index. So that's where the 2 comes from. Cos of 2x, well, for that, you'd have to think, right, well, cos, if you differentiate it, goes to negative sign. So we'd have negative sign 2x. But again, you're thinking, I need to apply the chain rule because it's cos of the 2x. So differentiate outside the brackets, differentiate inside, and then multiply. So cos would go to negative sign, so we'd have negative sign 2x, but then we're multiplying by 2 because the derivative of the 2x is 2, which would give us then negative 2 sine 2x for v dash. dy by dx then is u dash v plus u v dash. So u dash times v, you'd have 2e to the power of 2x times cos of 2x plus, but here we've got e to the power of 2x times negative 2 sine 2x. So the plus would really become a minus. Uh, number wise, you'd have the 2, you'd have an e to the power of 2x and then you put your trig term last, the sine 2x. Perfect. Uh, from there, any common factors? Well, yes, we can take out the 2. We can also take out an e to the power of 2x. So we'd have 2 times e to the power of 2x multiplied by the brackets, which would be cos 2x, take away sine 2x. And that would be your answer. Example 4, differentiate y equals x squared over e to the power of 2x. Amar, what would you do with this one? Perfect. Well done, Amar. You would be using the quotient rule, and you're using the quotient rule because you've got one function in terms of x divided by another function in terms of x. Yes. So, quotient rule, u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. u is going to be what's in the top, which will be x squared. Differentiate it, Amar. 2x. Perfect. v is going to be e to the power of 2x. Good. Differentiate it, Amar. Good. e to the power of 2x would stay as e to the power of 2x. But what would you do, Amar? Good, multiply by the derivative of the index. If you differentiate 2x, you get 2, so you're multiplying by that. Woo! dy by dx then is u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. So u dash times v is going to be 2x times e to the power of 2x. Take away x squared times 2e to the power of 2x. I'm just going to write that so I've got the number first. So I've got the 2, then I've got the x squared, and then I've got e to the power of 2x last. And I'm dividing that by v squared. v is e to the power of 2x, so I've got e to the power of 2x in brackets squared. From there, well, if I leave the top just as it is just now, e to the power of 2x squared, what would that become, Amar? Perfect, yeah. Really, all you're doing is you're taking the indices and you're multiplying them together. So x to the power of something to the power of something. To work that out, you just multiply the indices together. So e to the power of 2x to the power of 2 would be e to the power of 4x. Or you could think about it as e to the power of 2x times e to the power of 2x. It's the same base, so add the indices 2x times 2. Add 2x will give you 4x. Perfect. Uh, from there, could you simplify it? Well, yes, you could. Always look for common factors. In the top line, you could take out a common factor of 2x e to the power of 2x. So that's your common factor, and it would leave you with 1 minus x. And we're still dividing by e to the power of 4x. And then from there, what could you do? Well, if you look, about, look at it, you've got an e to the power of 2x in the top and an e to the power of 4x on the bottom. You have the same base, and you are dividing. So what you're thinking is, well, e to the power of 2x divided by e to the power of 4x would become... 1 over e to the power of 2x. You could also think about it, same base, you're dividing, so you subtract so e to the power of 2x, and then you'd have the 2x take away 4x, which would give you negative 2x. Move that down to the bottom, so you'd have e to the power of 2x. Either way, you'd then end up with 2x bracket 1 minus x over e to the power of 2x. And that would be your answer. There you go, there's a quite a few examples with differentiating e to the power of x. Try the questions just in the workbook on page 24. Check them as you go, email me if you need the workbook. But remember, differentiating e to the power of x, it would stay as e to the power of x. But remember the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the index. Good luck. Bye. Woo.